Welcome back to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Time for the press, as always, we take you through the pages of a national dailies. We have G.D. Johnson, who is on standby. Good morning, G.D. Johnson. Well, as soon as we're able to establish connection with G.D. Johnson, we'll definitely have him share his thoughts on some of the national issues that we have on the front. But now, I'd like to start off with a Daily Trust newspaper this morning. And the attention will be on the top caption. Looking at the front page, it says, Ukraine crisis. 12,000 students order Nigerians trapped. Uh, that's what's boldly written on the Daily Trust newspaper. We're living in fear, students quoted to say. Parents are worried. Federal government arranged special flight operation for evacuation. Investigation link please military and personnel to terrorism uh, financing, according to Governor Arufai. And fuel price hike looms as marketers kick against 5 million Naira shipment charge. Electoral Act, four ministers, MDA's heads to resign over 2023. And you also have experienced people, academics needed for governance. That's what uh, the president is quoted to say. And NCAA petitioned as airpiece peace disrespects the Emir of Kanu. That newborn found with a madman in Bielsa. These are the headlines on the Daily Trust newspaper this morning. And straight to the leadership newspaper with these headlines. The big one there, APC National Chairmanship. Aspirants reject Adamu as consensus candidates. Say election process amounts to imposition. No need for Sutsaya to know I fit the bill. Al Makura. No one has been anointed. Mustafa. And Aitsu urges party stakeholders to intervene. And also, uh, the paper is not left out of the coverage of the Russia-Ukraine crisis. With this headline, Russia risks harsher sanctions over Ukraine attack. Leadership makes Northern Professionals calendar event. Uh, why some for governors, no governor sacrificed Deputy Gusol. And stakeholders warn against scrapping of police trust fund. Those are the headlines on front page of the leadership on Friday. Away from the leadership newspaper, uh, we look at the punch. The punch says, Russia, Ukraine were stranded. Nigerians send SOS to Buhari, demand evacuation. Federal government fails to provide timeline for evacuation as Ukraine shorts airspace. Espat slam government for delay as Nigerians invaded nation rights Buhari. And APC discussing zoning presidency to South, says Arufai. Buhari ignorant of Southwest infrastructural problems, a penny fair is quoted. I remember a time where I had a colleague who said, the president, you know, if you go to the FCT, I mean, the roads are just uh, very smooth. And, you know, party situation might not just necessarily be the problem. And the president might not be able to relate uh, with the issues that other parts of the country is faced with. However, that's on the other side. Uh, bring back Nigerians in Ukraine, reps tells the president. Oyomi produced APC National Secretary Governor's planning meeting. And you also have Naira loses 10.6% of value annually, says the IMF. And legislative aides accuse National Assembly management of diverting 25 billion Naira and fuel shortage pilots error cost Okpebi fatal helicopter crash. That's according to a report. For the want of time, we'll just quickly move away from the punch. Let's take uh, stories on the front page or headlines on the front page of the Nation newspaper this morning. The big one there, lawmakers seek power to invite president governors. Constitution review proposal gets uh, sets tough conditions for independent candidacy party registration. Interesting one to see and to follow uh, with the ongoing constitution review um, going on at the National Assembly. Why petrol scarcity persists by Ipman. Seven SAN, 16 others apply to be Supreme Court justices. Details on page two of the Nation newspaper. And Tinbu visits Oni gets blessings. And two policemen, five others killed in multiple attacks on banks. Really sad one there. El Fai, resources in terrorist hands can subvert Nigeria. El Rufai, resources in terrorist hands can subvert Nigeria. Al Makura, two others reject APC zoning 
consensus plans, party picks, zonal congress panels, and, and those are um, the headlines on front page of the Nation News. But let's uh, now welcome the uh, Chief Lecturer of the Nigerian Institute of Journalism. Uh, Jide Johnson is our guest analyst on of the press this morning. Mr. Johnson, thanks for joining us. Um, let's quickly look at the uh, the one, the big one on the front page of the Nation newspaper, uh, the ongoing uh, review or, uh, yes, a review of uh, the report um, brought by the the committees, relevant committees at the National Assembly with the ongoing national, uh, the constitution review. Um, before this, we had the zonal and the state's, you know, um, uh, uh, public hearings. Um, what's your take on the process so far and some of the, um, uh, the changes that are being, are being muted? For me, fundamentally, constitutionally, and as required by the principle of separation of power, um, guided by checks and balances, there is no basis for us not to have in the constitution the um, legislature not having the power to invite the president to come and explain. I recall when um, the amendment was made in the seventh uh, proposed amendment was made whether in the seventh or eighth, that the president should, there should be a state of the nation address, whereby the president will annually come to the National Assembly and make a presentation on the state of the nation, just like you have in the United States of America, where the president goes to the Congress to deliver an address annually. And some people said it was not necessary. It is important. What platform do we have that brings an interface between the legislature and the executive in explaining what the president intends to do and what he has done beyond bringing the annual appropriation bill presentation before National Assembly for deliberation and passage into the um, Appropriation Act. So as far as I'm concerned, these amendments are, are, are important. We need to look at what are the loopholes that we have in the existing um, document, um, the 1999 Constitution has amended, which impliedly gives too much power to the president. Uh, in actual sense, uh, it makes the president to become an emperor because this constitution was the product of the 1995 constitution that was meant to perpetuate Abacha in power forever. So um, I hope the National Assembly will have the, 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 the resources to go ahead full throttle on these various amendments. Because once they put this amendment in place and then they turn it into a bill, now we'll be begging the president to sign. Uh, would they have the gumption to ensure that two-thirds of them overrides the president and vetoes the president in signing this into law? Those are the things we'll be, we'll be, looking, out, we'll be looking out for and we'll be looking forward to with respect to these various amendments. Um, on the issue of having picking justices from from the bar and not only the benches, justice of the Supreme Court. I think it's it's a welcome development that you see people that have equipped themselves in private uh, practice, uh, even in academia, can come to the Supreme Court justices without any political interference in terms of being politically influenced in their career development in the judiciary and then will be able to have independent minds like we have in other climates in our Supreme Court. So these amendments are welcome and are necessary for us to, to put things in proper perspective. Uh, do, do you think that Nigerians are, are, are fully aware of the extent to which these this, uh, amendments are going uh, and uh, are engaged no, 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 no. as, as engaged? Of, because you have of, other things that are on the line that um, we need to talk about. For instance, the, the issue of having life pension for the Senate President, uh, the House of Rep Speaker, and their deputies, um, the issue of um, the, the independent candidacy and, and other issues that have not been talked about. Um, uh, some have rejected this entire the process. Focus, the, focus, the focus of these people is the pension for their principal officers. They don't think about pensions for Nigerians. And a lot of these things are glossed in secrecy. Um, there is awareness what what we talk about is the level of engagement and transparency in in the discussion of this of, of, of this of this issue and it's what they want us to know that we know what they don't want us to know they keep shrouded in secret and you know they usually say they go into an executive session 
whereby they send they send all journalists and they close the door to themselves to have deliberation. I don't know where the people the parliament is the people's parliament. It is the people's house. I don't know where the, the parliament will go on an executive session and then send everybody out. If they want to do that, you do that at your caucus level. Once issue comes for public debate, these are some of the things we need to throw away. When issue comes for debate in the floor of the National Assembly, you don't shut anybody out. You let people know what you are debating on because what you are discussing has to do with Nigerians. So the moment you are doing that, you want to do that, you do it at your caucus level, your parliamentary level, where each of the parties we have their own deliberation and they come and present their own position with respect to issues of national importance and issues of importance to Nigerians. But what do we what do we know? And now uh, uh, we have we have not been elected as legislature. They know they know they, they know better, Mr. and they Mr. say they are Johnson, going Johnson. to executive session. Yeah, Mr. Johnson, one, one yeah, last Mr. one on this, Mr. Jerry Johnson. Um, I was at the one of the zonal hearings uh, for this process. You know, they had the House of Reps had its own you know groupings of states, and the, the particular state they went to to ask those groups of states, uh, those states in each group to come present um, uh, their memoranda at public hearings. I was at one of them, and and I I I, I think I can say that. The people of Nigeria were not fully participating in this process. Some groups came and made, you know, um, presentations and all that, but but it wasn't really, really, you know, well attended. And at some points, you know, the people, it was almost as if it was just uh, a, a parade of sorts, you know. So, is this what we need at this point? Because we're looking at this constitutional amendment that will last the country for years to come. And the constitution is a constitution, it's a ground norm. If it's done, it's done. We can't change anything except we go through another process. So do we need this or should Kofi, we? Yes. Kofi, why would you delay constitutional amendment to less than a year when transition to the next government will start? Why? Why do we have to do this to this minute? They packed everything together so that people are disturbed and distracted. It's a strategy we've asked. Why do you wait till 2022 to pass Electoral Act Amendment Bill. When the last election was conducted in 2019, could you have done that in 2020 and get done with it in 2021? So it's a strategy. These people are smart. They don't. They they they, they don't want you to get involved in this thing, and so they packed everything together, and you are distracted, and you don't have a scene how you are governed. You see, even those that are coming to the public hearing, some of them are orchestrated them. Um, orchestrated participant in this in this in this public 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 hearing then how do you group how do you do public hearings in, in, at zones level you could you could do it on state by state basis or you could decentralize this process send some to Lagos send some to send some to 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 or if you want to do southwest or you put two states together even if you just imagine it's if you're doing zona um zona public hearing in, in the North Central. Just imagine Niger. Niger to Plitu. Plitu to 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 to, to Benue. Benue to to Kwara. Kwara to Kugi. How do you where do they converge? Where do people come? Where do real Nigerians come from to know what is really affecting them? And this is a jamboree that we have been doing calling constitutional amendments, but the major thing that is of interest to them, which will get quick passage. You know, this just came into into light just recently that you are looking for pension for principal officers of the National Assembly, of the National Assembly after 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 the end of their term. These people are, 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 are just a joke. All right, G.D. Johnson, let's also take a look at uh, the Punch newspaper this morning, the Russian-Ukraine crisis. Stranded Nigerians send SOS to Buhari demand evacuation. Now, the argument that's been ongoing or the argument in our space is that uh, some people are saying that the government should not be responsible for the evacuation of the student. I mean, the fact that they're not necessarily the one who sent them out. And some people are saying that they should evacuate. The back and forth is still ongoing, uh, as you also still have some other countries who have not acted differently from the way Nigerian has. I uh, would like to share your thoughts on this issue. What is the responsibility of government to citizenry? That's the responsibility. Nigerians are caught in armed conflict between two nations that are neighbors. And we don't know how catastrophic this could be. And having a situation whereby Nigerians are there 
and some are saying that Nigeria had no business evacuating them from why do we have embassies in foreign countries? Why do we send uh, members of the diplomatic community to those countries? Why? That's the question. Why do we spend money on that, on foreign relations? If we are not there on the basis of our of, of our city, it's just for us to do business alone. Do they know what contributions those Nigerians are making to the Ukrainian economy and what contributions those Nigerians are making back home? It is your responsibility of government. Okay, so we seem to be having some network uh, issues and connection with G.D. Johnson, but as soon as we're able to, you know, have a, uh, have a smooth connection, then we have G.D. Johnson back. But, um, I mean, these are some of the conversations that's ongoing. A lot of people would say uh, you have parents or wards and guardians who have sent their kids and what have you to study in Ukraine. All right, G.D. Johnson, you're back. Uh, you had that thought on just before we got disconnected by the, uh, the network. I, I just said that it's a responsibility of government, as simple as ABC. It's the responsibility of government to evacuate Nigerians that are caught in armed conflict between two nations. It's a responsibility. Just imagine, um, it, it doesn't matter. The life of an average Nigerian is important. It's No life is better than other life. We all have one life to live. Uh, you can't borrow other people's life to live your own. So, assuming that it's the children that are there or the students that are there are the son of senators, governors, and president. What do you think will happen? It is the responsibility of government. Government is the father of all children, of all Nigerian children. So the responsibility of government to take to to, to evacuate these people. And that's my take on that. Uh, Jenny Johnson, we we'll go back to the Nation newspaper um, and uh, the headline on the top left corner of the front page of that newspaper uh, goes to us, Why Petrol Scarcity Persists by Ipman, being the Independent Petroleum uh, Marketers Association of Nigeria, uh, which has explained uh, its members' preference to sell or for selling, uh, or the reason behind the, 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 the preference for selling petrol above the regulated pump price. Um, the national, according to that paper, and this is what the story says, uh, the Ipman National Vice President, Tabuokaro Megandi, says that the marketers were getting supply. This is the petrol stations now getting supply at 180 naira ex depot price. This is way above uh, what is uh, the approved official ex depot price per liter. And uh, he says that uh, petrol remains scarce in major cities for two reasons. Refusal of Ipman members to get supply at high cost and hoarding of products to sell above regulated price to make marginal profit. So w what's your thought on this? If we have regulatory uh, agencies in the country who have been uh, speaking and shouting and uh, with a sense of entitlement, um, how come the, 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 the depots are selling above the regulatory price? And nobody's saying it. I bought fuel at 200. I bought fuel at 200 naira per liter consistently. I bought, I traveled to the state of last weekend. I bought one at 300 naira. So if there are no regulatory body, all you just need to do is just to pay visit to the forest stations. And you see people selling. The last I bought fuel, they were selling, they sold to close to about 25 cakes before this. The, they, they sell to, to a car in front of me, and when it was my turn, they sold about 15 kegs before my car was, was filled. So it's, it's a free for all. It tells you that there are no regulations. It's a state of chaos, disorder, and anomaly. And it's, it's more or less like there's no control. Things fall apart, and the center cannot hold when it comes to. And I'm sorry, I'm not a prophet of doom with what is happening in Russia. Russia is the third largest producer of oil. In the world, it wasn't happening in Russia. We see the implications of what it will have on the global oil market, and that implications will affect us in Nigeria because one, we don't produce locally, a, we export our crude oil, and then we import our fin the finished product back to Nigeria. So we, it's 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 not something which is going to end soon. One, we don't have any sort of control locally. There's no there's no direction. There's no there's no specific. And response from the government, and we are seeing independent marketer, private, non-state actors talking and talking and talking. Whereas the state actors that are regulated by the PPMC, NNPC, we are not hearing anything. 
I was telling someone we are we are we are a a a a a the we are the watchdog of the or uh, of the downstream sector of we are the watchdogs of people going about looking at how whether these petrol stations are compliant or not compliant with what government is it, it feeds into people's sentiment and, and suspicion that this present scarcity is an attempt by government to actually increase the pump prices of petroleum product that if you suffer for it for about one month or two months, we tell government, you know what? Let government start selling this product at whatever. As long as the products are available, we don't want this action. So it's a time tested strategy, and they are deploying it. And um, God help Nigeria with, with respect to what is what is really what is really what is really happening. But it's just a matter of time for those that are in office and those that are in authority to understand that you can fool the people. Um, some of the time you can't fool them all of the time because it's an untold hardship. I can tell you, Kofi and Messi, it's an untold hardship on an average on average Nigeria. Why should I go to stress paying for a product, paying for a service that I'm even going to pay over the top to get? It's it's it's, it's double whammy, it's double tragedy. You queue to buy fuel at the fuel station, you spend hours to buy fuel that you are going to pay over the top for something which will be readily available if you pay for a service you should enjoy the service however it is classical case of what fella said suffering and smiling all right, let's, uh, as we call sit down, we'll look at the Daily Trust newspaper this morning. I'd like to ask you if you do agree with this, experienced people, academics needed for governance. That's what the president is quoted to uh, say on the page of the Daily Trust. Experienced people, I agree. Academics, academics that can't run tertiary institutions successfully. They can't they can run, they depend on government. To, for, that's why ASU has been going on strike since. Um, that um, uh, as well has been going on strike, the university system are not run democratically. Just, just take a look, go around, ask, ask people that work in that system. But the level of autocracy and authoritarianism that characterize our arbitrary, you'll be shocked with it. I'm, I, I'm talking from an industry which I belong to and which I know. The level, the level of impunity with which things are done. Um, you know, in the university system, you have a senate. Just like you have the Senate in in, um, in 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 the National Assembly as part of the organs of 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 of, of government um, at, the, at the at the at the state level in public governance, you also have the Senate at the university. You have the Senate at the university system. You have the academic board at the polytechnic level. How democratic are these things run? So uh, the fact that you are uh, the fact that you are learning does not make you intelligent. The fact that you are learning does not make you a good administrator. So leadership is not the product of education alone. It's a product of it's a product of your experience. It's a product of of your of your personal development. It's a product of 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 of, of your vision. What we president should be talking about are people that have vision for this country, that have planned program of actions, not what what they want to do, what they plan to do to help solve the problem of this of this nation. If all our university, all the departments of economics, business administration, and finance and insurance have not been able to come up with a template to help us solve our economic problem. So you are going to that community to go and get someone that 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 will run that will run your economy. Or if the in the all the engineering faculties that we have in Nigeria cannot come up with the, with the solution on how we can construct our roads that can last for 50, 60 years, uh, uh, considering uh, Johnson, the we topography. Have to let you go now. Uh, we're really sorry. Yeah. I mean, time is never yeah. a friend of us when we're talking it's, about. It's a pleasure to be with you. It's a pleasure to be with you. Have a wonderful weekend. All right. Thank you so much, GD Johnson. We do appreciate your time and we look forward to having more of you sharing your thoughts on the show. Well, it's the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Let's let you know what happened today in history, being the 25th day in the month of February. We'll be right back after this timeout. Please stay tuned.